Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Arts and Crafts with a Naturalist. My name is Clarissa, and today we will be doing some watercolor algae. So some of you may have seen or done a flower press where you take a flower, you put it in a book, you wait a while, you open it back up and it's a pressed flower. You can also do that with some algae. And since that kind of takes a while and you need some cloth and some cardboard, I decided I would just paint the algae to look like it's pressed on the paper. So we've got a green algae, not all too exciting. We've got our red algae. That one's a bit more pretty. Got our brown algae. You've seen a bunch of long pieces of kelp on the beaches. So if you have any questions throughout, you can put those in the comments. What you're going to need Probably a cup of water, some watercolors. Watercolor paper works best for absorbing water, but if you don't have that, that's fine. May not look as good, but you'll still have fun, hopefully. Along with the watercolors, they'll do the best. But if you don't have watercolors, you can still paint some algae. So we've got multiple types of algae and we classify them as either green, red, or brown. And that has to do with the pigments in them. So we can start with the green algae. This guy just got chlorophyll like plants have. Green algaes are not too exciting. They kind of just look like a piece of lettuce. A lot of it is actually called sea lettuce. I've got a picture here from a cool book called The Beachcomber's Guide to she she Seashore Life in the Pacific Northwest. So there's some green algae. Kind of just looks like some lettuce. So that's what we're going for. Like a piece of lettuce. If you actually want to do some algae presses, you can look that up online and make sure that you only harvest clean seaweeds for our not clean seaweed but clean seaweeds from clean waters our seaweed is just going to be kind of a blob green seaweeds are thin they're roughly only about one cell thick. So they are really good for pressing. So I've got my blob. I decided I'm going to put a hole in this one because these guys are kind of fragile, so they'll usually get tears in them. But they've got that chlorophyll to help take in 
and convert sunlight into sugar. And then use those sugars to build up their cells, which then get grazed on by a bunch of animals that live in the water. You will mostly find the algae up in near the beaches because that's where they're going to find substrate to hang on to and get enough light to photosynthesize. And so a lot of creatures that eat them are like snails that live up in the shore. You've also got crabs. They really like to eat. Green algae, just filling in. Another creature that really likes green algae are limpets. Limpets are pretty cool. They will actually only eat a certain part around the algae to make sure that they leave some for future if they want to snack on it later. A lot of other creatures that get eaten in the inner tidal, like shrimp and crabs, little baby crabs, they'll hide up in the sea lettuce, the green seaweeds. There we go, filling it in. Add some bit of yellow to it. If you're ever out on the beach and you see some sea lettuce. I wouldn't recommend picking it up and eating it, but you definitely can if it's clean. Make sure there's no other organisms living on that sea lettuce. I don't think it's too appetizing. There are definitely other types of algae that taste a bit better some different reds and browns that we'll talk about later. But you'll find lots of green algae up in the intertidal, especially at low tide. And a lot of organisms will hide in there to stay wet under the seaweeds. And they can also then lay their eggs on those seaweeds. Some really adorable sea slugs called nudibranchs will lay their eggs there. Anyone have any questions about green algae? We're just going for kind of a blob. I put a hole in mine because they kind of tear easily. Gives it a bit more excitement. Green algae. Has chlorophyll, which looks green, makes the plant look green. So that's why we call them the green algaes.
Next, we'll move on to the red algae. Piece of red algae that I painted earlier. Here's another type of red algae. They're usually a lot more branched. But if you've ever seen like a pink coral looking crust on a rock, that is actually a red algae as well. There's some red algae. We've got our encrusting one there. Some filament type there. Red branching, a bit of purple. What's cool about red algae is that it actually is what nori or the seaweed that you use to make. Um, Sushi or anything wrapped in a seaweed is nori or porphyra, and it is a red algae. So while you can use green algae to make like a salad out of the sea lettuce or use sea noodles, which is another type, uh, red algae is where it's at. You get that, that seaweed wrap on your sushi or any other form of wrapped item. I just like sushi. I don't know too much else than that. So for red algae, they also contain chlorophyll, but they have a different pigment and that makes them red. or they have an additional pigment that makes them red compared to just green, like the green algae. If you are just joining us, Welcome to Arts and Crafts with a Naturalist. My name's Clarissa, and we're doing some algae watercolors. Similar to like if you pressed algae with some cloth and paper towel or cardboard, you can get all the water out and it makes a nice little print on the sheet of paper, but that's too much effort to do via Zoom. So we're just doing some paintings, doing some red algae, going to make it like that. These guys are a lot more branched and because of that extra pigments rather than just the green algae, it allows them to live deeper down in the water column. So, well, you might see a lot of green algae near the top of the beach. You'll find a lot more red algae lower down.
making it branched, allowing it to obtain more light by having those different branches. What's cool about the red algae is that they live in two different life stages. So they kind of live part of their life as reproductive structures and other parts of their life as just single cells. Other types of red algae that you might see are like Turkish towel that will be red and bumpy, or you've got um, iridescent. That one's cool. You see like a rainbow effect on those ones. But here we mostly have the coralline encrusting algae, all that pink that you see on rocks. Red algae, I'm gonna add a bit of purple to it because I like to add a bit more color. Anyone have any questions about red algae? Some great areas where we can find some cool algae around here would not be Priest Point. That's kind of a bit muddy for the seaweeds, whereas Burfoot and Tolmi are a bit more rocky. And so those ones will be your best bets to find seaweed. And since they live in water, Low tides are our best. If you go at high tide, you're probably not gonna see a lot of living algae. You may find a lot of algae that has broken off, been torn. And so you'll find those ones up on the beach all drying out. So if you're doing algae presses, you want the algae to be wet first and then you're drying it rather than finding the dry algae on the beach. So now I'm going to do the brown algae. Usually the biggest ones you'll see. So if you see the giant bull kelps, they've got a long stalk with a bulb on the end and then their fronds come out or a sugar kelp, which will be kind of like that one. It may be a bit wavy inside. And so just like the red algae, the brown one does have chlorophyll, but it has another pigment as well that makes it brown. So a lot of brown algaes have a hold fast, which is kind of like a root system, but it doesn't take in nutrients. It just holds onto a rock. And then it's got a big stalk. And then it's got leaves or blades.
not the best photos of brown algae. You got big leaves, got like palm fronds. A real common brown algae that we have around here is fucus. And if you've seen, it's kind of like little brown fingers and they've got little bulbs on the end and that's like an air sac that helps them float. So gonna make a hold fast to hold my brown algae down. Start with the hold fast. Brown algae is one of the fastest growing. Some of it can go up to a foot a day. So if you see those big kelp beds, that's your brown algae. And those beds are great for sea urchins to feed on. And then you got your sea otters that feed on those sea urchins. So there's an incident when we hunted all of our sea otters. So there was very few of them. They weren't keeping in check that urchin, sea urchin population. And so the sea urchins ate all the hold fast off of the kelp and it floated away and we lost our kelp beds. So it was cool to see when we brought back our sea otters that they ate the sea urchins and our kelp beds started to come back. I've also seen ads for kelp pickles. So they take that long stem off of the seaweed and they cut it up and they pickle it. I haven't tried them, but I'm curious. So if you are walking along the beach and you see lots of brown algae washed up on shore, you're like, why is this algae all here? It could be either that a sea urchin population came through and ate all of the hold fast off of the kelp. So it floated away. So again, that anchoring structure on the bottom of the kelp. It's just so that it can hold it there. Or maybe a boat came by and hit the kelp bed and tore up a bunch of kelp. Gotta watch where your propeller is. Maybe it was just some rough seas that washed them all ashore. but they are only seasonal. You won't find them in the winter time. They come out in the spring. That's when all the light is there for them to take in. Decided to go with a more leaf looking one. rather than like the wavy. Yeah. 
we could do like the bowl kelp with the fronds coming off. So there, we have painted our pretend algae pressings. Red algae, it's got chlorophyll and other photosynthetic pigments in it that make it red. Green algae just has the chlorophyll. Brown algae has chlorophyll, but it also contains other pigments that make it look brown. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see some actual algae come out this weekend to meet the beach, I will be there. We are open at Burfoot and Priest Point. We'll have naturalists out there. We'll be wearing green vests if you want to go spot us and ask us about the different algae that live around here. Or if you're more interested in all the crabs that we found or some of the fish that we found underneath the rocks at Burfoot. Pretty cool stuff out there at the beaches. That's why we want to be out there to show you. So come visit us. That's this Saturday and Sunday, the 18th and 19th, Burfoot and Priest Point. We'd love to have you. We are opening up. We had a soft opening. We're gonna have a bigger opening later on. So we can come, you can come visit us at the Estuarium in downtown Olympia. If you have any more questions about anything that you see at the beaches that you didn't get to ask me today or that you came up with later while well, this wasn't a live video we do have the ask a naturalist facebook page where you can ask any question you have we've got a bunch of very dedicated staff members working on that and volunteers to answer those questions I think that is all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed Arts and Crafts with a Naturalist. Have a good day, everyone.